Good evening and welcome. I'm Paul Woodruff, Dean of Undergraduate Studies. I am proud to welcome you to this magnificent hall, which I hope you visit again and again during your years here for the marvelous events that will be scheduled. This is truly one of the gems of the university. And I'm about to introduce you to another shining gem of the university. We have these events partly because we'd like you to see this beautiful space, but much more than that, we'd like you to share an experience together that is both academic in a good sense and awesome. I hope you still use that word. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be awesome. We asked the students through the Senate of College Councils which professor we should invite to give this lecture. And they didn't take long to deliberate. They came back and they spoke with one voice and they said, we want Charles Ramirez Berg. He is among the most loved professors in this university. And that's not just because he knows so much about film and the history of film and has been the teacher of so many people who've gone into the film industry. It's because of his huge passion for film and the teaching of film and the love that he exhibits for his students day in and day out. So without more ado, I want to introduce one of the great gems of the university, Professor Charles Ramirez Berg. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Um, good evening. Um, I just wanted to say a word about um, Paul. And, um, you know, he's, he's um, dean of undergraduate studies, but he's also a very well-respected philosopher. And he doesn't uh, play the, 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 the stereotype of the philosopher very well, the, you know, the head in the clouds. Um, type of philosopher. He is a feet on the ground type of philosopher. And let me just tell you a little story uh, to illustrate that. Um, in one of his classrooms, which is a small classroom with a small class, um, at one of the um, tables, there was, you know, it was a small enough class, everybody sits uh, at, at a seminar table. And he didn't like the fact that, you know, it was oblong. And you couldn't see, every, everybody couldn't see everybody else. So, uh, he went home and he designed uh, a table that was oval, okay, and not only did he design it, he built one, okay, and moved it into that classroom so that everybody sitting at that table could see everybody else. So, um, uh, as I say, um, uh, a hands-on, feet-on-the-ground philosopher, uh, and he's uh, a, a very special person, a very special dean, and uh, I'm honored uh, to be here um, uh, addressing you. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. Uh, so this is Robert Rodriguez and me, okay? And uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm um, from El Paso. I'm a native Texan. Any El Pasoans here? Yeah. yeah. All right. You're good. See, there, there, there aren't many of us, and so we have to stick together. It's a long way from El Paso. Uh, 600 miles. Thank you for coming. Uh, 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 you have to really want to come, and uh, we appreciate uh, any El Paso ones that have made the trip. Um, um, I grew up in El Paso, grew up on the border, um, came, uh, I was, uh, when I was your age, I was a pre-med uh, student, and so my uh, major was in biological sciences with a minor in chemistry, and I did the whole nine yards, and I was accepted to medical school, and the whole deal. And, and then I didn't go, uh, because I love movies. So um, I taught high school for a while in San Antonio, and uh, I was a science teacher. And then I came here and, uh, and got a master's in film, and then later got a PhD in film. So um, you know my roots in, in, at the University of Texas and at Austin go back a long ways, and I have the dream job. I'm doing 
what I really want to do at the place I really want to do it. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very happy to be here to talk to you. Um, I want to talk about um, one of my students, Robert Rodriguez. And I want to say that um, all my students, um, uh, I learn something and I know something from all my students. Okay, um, and, uh, and that includes the students I have right now in uh, UGS 303, the film history class. Uh, I'm learning from you already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I told them to be here and be loud. So. Uh, um, and so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the great secrets of teaching is that you learn from your students. Uh, and sometimes I think I learn more from them than they learn from me. But uh, so I could, you know, I could do a lot of these, you know, a lot of students and me. Um, and, you know, so those of you, uh, you know, I'm teaching right now, maybe, you know, in some years in the future, it'll be your name there and me, okay? Um, but I wanted to do Robert Rodriguez and me because it occurred to me that um, the story I'm about to tell you goes back about 20 years. We're in the 20th anniversary of this story, Robert Rodriguez and me. And so what I want to do is tell you the story of how uh, an undergraduate student uh, here at the University of Texas, while he was a student, um, made a film, made a short film, and then made a feature film, and then got a contract with Columbia Studios while he was a junior at the uh, University of Texas. Okay? Um, but I also want to talk about what uh, he taught me, and maybe what he can teach you as well. So um, I don't want it just to be Robert Rodriguez and me. I want it to be you and Robert Rodriguez, OK? I want to see if there isn't something that he can teach, not just me, which he has, but he can teach you as well. So let me, let me start the story. And um, um, many of you know who he is, um, but for those of you who may not know, um, he is um, a director of Hollywood films. Here he is uh, directing uh, a film he made several years ago called Shorts. Um, I was allowed to go on, uh, on, on, uh, on the set and take some pictures. Here is uh, Robert working on uh, the double feature Grindhouse that he did with Quentin Tarantino, and his was called uh, Planet Terror. Um, but uh, in kind of chronological order, um, <clears throat> he began his, you know, his feature films with uh, El Mariachi in 92, then Desperado, uh, Antonio Banderas, and Selma Hayek, um, then uh, From Dust Till Dawn, Quentin Tarantino, and uh, George Clooney, um, The Faculty, uh, after that uh, Spy Kids, uh, Spy Kids 1, Spy Kids 2, Spy Kids 3D, uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Selma Hayek again, Antonio Banderas again, Johnny Depp. Um, uh, after that, um, uh, Sin City, um, then you know the Grindhouse uh, film, Planet Terror. Uh, last year, Machete, and four weeks ago, Spy Kids 4, OK? Um, and that film has been in the top 10 box office uh, films for four weeks in a row, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that, that's, that's a tough list to be on. And it's tough to be on it one week or two weeks, but four weeks in a row is pretty good. So um, uh, beyond that, the book that he wrote, uh, about making El Mariachi for $7,000 has become the Bible for independent filmmakers, okay? This, uh, around the world, okay? People all over the world read this book about how to make uh, an independent uh, movie with very few resources, okay? So, um, you know, he's a filmmaker, he's a director, he's a Hollywood director. He has a studio here in Austin called Troublemaker Studios. He makes his films here in Austin, so he's been um, you know, he's been great for the Austin community and the Austin uh, film and, and creative community. Um, but, um, you know, the Robert I want to talk about is, um, you know, let's go back um, 20, 22 years before all of this stuff happened, okay? And let's go back and talk about Robert um, in, say, 1989, 90, 91. 
Because uh, what I want to impress upon you is, um, <clears throat> once upon a time, Robert was just like you. He was a freshman walking around the campus, getting lost, and going, you know, looking for classrooms, all of that stuff, okay? And making his way. And uh, what he wanted to do, and the reason he came here, I uh, he went to high school, he's from San Antonio, went to St. Anthony's, and um, he came here because he wanted to make film. Film. Uh, he had been making movies on video for about eight or nine years before he even got here, okay? So he was a fairly well experienced movie maker, only it was on video. So he was dying to get his hands on some film equipment and make a film on film. So that's why he came here, okay? Very creative guy. While he was here, um, he um, <clears throat> begins doing a daily comic strip in the Daily Texan. So if you were here in 89, 90, you would be reading Los Hooligans by Robert Rodriguez every week. I mean, every day, okay? So, you know, five times a week he had Los Hooligans. Um, and, you know, so he was very creative, still making movies and trying to get into uh, film one, okay? The first production class. He was in communication, he was in RTF, but there was a problem. He couldn't get into film one, okay? Um, his GPA wasn't high enough. Okay? And so we in RTF, in our wisdom, wouldn't let him take film one. How smart are we, right? Sorry, Robert, you can't take film production. Uh, and so he would come by my office hours, and that's how I got to know him. And we'd strategize about, you know, what could he do, and how could he get into it, and, you know, how could he finally get into um, film one. And what he decided is, I'm going to film my way into film one, okay? And so what he does is um, there's this film festival, and he makes a film and enters it in the film festival, okay? It's called the National Third Coast Film and Video Festival. Enters the film, and he wins, okay? Then he comes back to us and says, look, I haven't taken a class. I made this film. I won the festival. Now can I get in? And they say, okay, you know, all right, we'll let you in, okay? Uh, wasn't that big of us? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so he gets in. And um, just to give you an idea of his perspective, okay, and how, how, you know, how you take things that happen to you and how you interpret them can make such a difference, all right? So, uh, <clears throat> he uh, gets in the class, and remember, he's never had a film camera in his hand, okay? He's only done um, video film, uh, uh, films on video. So, uh, he said, I remember the day when the teacher took the cameras out and handed the cameras to us. Now, the cameras in this class, film one, were 50-year-old cameras, okay? They were called um, Filmo 16s, 16 millimeter cameras, uh, made by Bell and Howell, and they were, but they were tanks. They were World War II vintage, but I mean, you just, you couldn't break them, you couldn't destroy them, they were wonderful. And they were wind-up cameras, okay? And he said some of the students around him were brought down by having these 50-year-old cameras. Oh, man, why don't you give us new stuff, this old stuff? And he said, on the other hand, he said, I was thrilled, because finally a film camera, okay? Which is what I want, all right. So just how, you know, how your mental perspective can change the world out there, okay? And the way you take, take in the world out there, all right. He decides, I'm going to make a movie that exploits this camera. I'm going to make this camera do everything it can do, and I'm going to put that in my movie, okay? So um, the movie he decides to make is uh, <clears throat> called Bedhead, and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Um, so he's, um, you know, he's going to write the script, and I'm going to show you the, the credits at the end of the film, and just watch and see how many things that he did, okay? And he continues to do that. He wants to do, you know, everything on the film. Um, <clears throat> it was a, f he had been making films, uh, he's from a big family, okay? There's our, there are a lot of Rodriguez's, okay? And he would use his brothers and sisters as the actors and as the crew, and, you know, in these movies that he was making. And he did the same thing here. And so the, um, the actors that you see in the film are his brothers and sisters, okay? And they helped out a little bit on the crew, and some of the people, some of the other students helped out as well, too, okay? So he wants to make a movie um, that does two things, two objectives. 
um, do everything this camera can do. And you're going to see, you know, special effects, whatever he could do, he made the camera do it. Second thing is, I want to make a film that I can send off to film festivals and win some awards because I want to get noticed and I want to take the next step. Okay? So, the film he makes is called Bedhead. Uh, and uh, let me show it to you right now. Okay, this is the film he made in film one. Uh, could we roll that, please? Rebecca? Rebecca, do you feel all right? You don't feel strange in any way? Okay, hold on. Visiting hours are over. That's my brother, David. He must have left his Nintendo long enough to see how I'm doing. Typical. Hello, my name is Rebecca, and I've learned a powerful lesson today. It started out like a typical Saturday morning. I was eating breakfast cereal with my sister, Mari Carmen. She's a fashion monster. I swear she won't do anything unless she's decked out in an evening gown, high heel shoes, and a pound of mom's makeup. I remember when I was that age. And then there's David. Boy, was I gypped when God was handing out brothers. Unwashed, uncivilized, and with the worst case of bedhead you've ever seen. Sometimes I wish we could sell David to the Arabs who could buy new dolls. He messed up all our other ones. how long I was out. But when I woke up, I remember feeling funny. Not funny ha-ha, but funny weird. 
When I saw the blood, I remember thinking, I could really use a band-aid right now. Huh? Now if only I could stop the... bleeding? David wanted forgiveness, but there was no way I was going to forgive him unless he was kissing my feet. Wait a second. Throw your head against the pole. Fall on your face. Convolt. <laughs> At this point, I realized I had the power to do anything I wanted. I could bring peace to the Middle East, or become the first Mexican-American female president of the United States. But first things first. And the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of that bedhead. it at that point. I was out of control. A complete demon too. I'm not sure if it was the fall or just the awesome surge of my powers that, you know, caused me to go nutso. Looking back now, I guess it wasn't such a swell idea to tie David to my bicycle and um, drag him around at 90 miles per hour. But that bedhead was going down no matter what. He must have gotten caught or something. Because before I knew it, I was flying through the air again. I don't remember much more after that. And here I am. A little bruised, a little shaken, with a headache. It was the first fall that made me go psycho. Because the second fall cleared it all up. I'm a straight thinking kid again. For my powers, I've learned that responsibility should be applied with them. And I'll never abuse them like I did today ever, ever again. Of that, I'm sure. But David... He'll never be sure. Okay, not bad for a first film film, right? Um, and so where did I see that film? I saw that film the fall of 1990, okay? And what we do in RTF is at the end of the semester, uh, we have a screening of all the production classes and all the work that the students have done. And that particular semester, we screened at Burdine Auditorium and um, we showed all the films that had been done that semester in one giant three-hour screening. And that's where I saw Bedhead. 
and uh, I was blown away. I just, you know, I just couldn't believe how good it was, how accomplished a filmmaker he was, how funny, how entertaining, all of that. Okay. Um, so, um, flash forward to the spring of '91, and I see Robert in the uh, communication building uh, lobby, and. Um, it's getting close to you know the end of the semester and summertime and all that, and so I asked him, you know, what's up? What are you going to do this summer? And he said, uh, I'm going to be working on a on a feature film in Mexico. I thought he meant that he had gotten an internship with a Mex Mexican film production company, and he would be you know be he would be an intern because many of our students get internships all over the place, and and that's one of the ways they get experience in uh, in the in the business. Um, and he said, no, 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 uh, I've saved up a little bit of money. I'm going to make my own feature. Okay? And I said, yeah? And he said, yeah. I said, well, how much money are we talking about? He said, $7,000. All right. And so I have a smile on my face, but I'm thinking something else. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, I, and the reason I'm thinking something else is because right before that, I had a couple of students who had decided the same thing. They were going to make feature films. And their plan was they were going to get two or three credit cards, you know, a Visa, a MasterCard, whatever, and they were going to max each one of them out, okay? So 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, and they're going to go off and make their movie. And they did. And what they had at the end of that experience was a $20,000 debt, okay? Um, the films were not very good. You couldn't do anything with them. They, you know, they just they, they didn't work at all. And all of that is what I'm thinking while he's telling me this, okay? And once again, I got a smile on my face, and I'm trying to figure out, oh, gosh, what do I tell him? I don't want to, you know, I don't want to discourage him. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, $7,000. Well, it's possible to make a film, but is it possible to make a watchable film, you know, uh, that anybody would want to watch for, you know, 90 minutes or so? And, you know, I just, gosh, the odds are, you know, so stacked against you. And, you know, all, I'm thinking all of these things. Flash forward 10 years, okay, and Robert and I on a, are on a stage like this, and I'm introducing him and one of his later films, and um, I'm telling this story. And I get to this part, and I said, you know, I, I didn't know what to tell Robert. And, and then I said, and I don't even remember what I, what I did tell Robert. And he interrupted me, standing right next to me, he interrupted me, and he said, oh, I remember what you said. I said, really? Uh, so, thing to know about Robert, if you ever meet him, be careful, because he's one of those people that has, uh, you know, uh, just photographic, whatever you call the memory that, you know, you remember everything, okay? So if you have a conversation with him today, he'll remember it 20 years, verbatim, 20 years from now, okay? So um, I said, you do? You remember what I said? He said, yeah, I remember exactly what you said. Ooh, okay, all right, so what did I say? And he said, you said, anything is possible, good luck. And I said, really? He said, yes. I said, yes, okay, because uh, that's not what I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking all sorts of things, you know, and I thought, gosh, I don't know, but, you know. So then I said, okay, look, um, and this is what I tell all, all my production students, you know, uh, when you've got something for me to see, you know, let me see it, because I love to watch, you know, films in proce process and the creative process and all of that. So he says, fine. He said, we're going to be shooting in August. I'm going to edit all, all fall. I'll have something at the end of the, uh, the fall semester, you know, November, December. I said, great. Let me see it, okay? So, uh, end of the semester, okay, probably around Thanksgiving time sometime, Robert shows up uh, at my office, okay, and he has this tape, okay, and he says, I've got it. And I said, really? He said, yeah, it's El Mariachi, okay? And I say, really? You know, I, I can't impress upon you enough how difficult it is to finish a film that fast. You know, it takes, you know, Martin Scorsese or Steven Spielberg a year, two years to finish a film, and they have all the resources in the world. And here's a guy doing it on his own, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and, um, and I said, that's it? He said, yeah, I've got it. He said, it's in Spanish, and I haven't subtitled it yet, but you understand Spanish? Sure, I understand Spanish. Well, uh, then, you know, you'll understand it, yeah. He said, well, I'd really appreciate if you looked at it and gave me some feedback. Okay, uh, I'll be happy to do it. Okay, right, so, um, that particular time, so that's 20 years ago, um, I was an assistant professor 
I was trying to get tenure so I could be associate professor. And to do that, you have to write a ton of stuff and get a ton of stuff published and you know, all this stuff. I was also graduate advisor, so you know, I was spending time doing that. That particular day, I, w I had been teaching all day. I had a screening that night, the 7.30 screening. And those of, you know, that, those of you that are in my class know that I go to the screenings. I introduce the film. I sit with the students. I sit with the class and watch the film. And so I got home real late. You know, and by the time I got to you know, when I could watch the film, it was probably close to midnight. And I'm thinking, gosh, I am exhausted. But then again, I told Robert I would watch it. So I owe it to him to at least start it. I'm at least going to start the film, OK? And you know, so I'll make it you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes in, and then I'll, you know, I'll go to bed and finish it tomorrow, maybe. So uh, you know, put it in the VCR and start watching. And what he had done was um, he put the, the, the first um, thing that he put uh, on the tape was a preview, a trailer for El Mariachi. He had made a trailer. And, uh, <clears throat> and so that's the first thing I'm watching. I'm watching this trailer. And it was so compelling. It was so exciting. It was so vibrant visually that I just kept watching. I said, if that's the movie, I want to watch it. Okay? So those two minutes were just so wonderful cinematically that I watched the whole film. So, you know, and I, you know, I stayed up till two in the morning watching this movie. So let me show you, uh, because I, you know, I, I, uh, I told him how much I enjoyed the trailer and how it, you know, and he said, it worked then. You know? uh, and he still does this. He makes a trailer while he's shooting the film. The film isn't finished shooting, but he's already making the trailer. And he says it helps him keep on track. OK, so let me show you the trailer uh, for what was to become uh, known as El Mariachi when it was released. And I'll tell you that story afterwards. But let me show you the trailer and um, you know these compelling two minutes that made me uh, keep watching so if you could run the trailer please So that's the trailer that made me stay up late. So I call him the next day, and I said, you know, I tell him that story, and I said, yeah, this is great. We got to get together and talk. And he said, great. I need some feedback. So you know, we got together, and I told him how much I enjoyed it, and I asked him, you know, we're, you know, they're all non-actors. It doesn't look like a seven thousand dollar movie. Okay. What's the next thing you're going to do, Robert? He says, well, I'm going to take it out to to California. I'm going to go to Hollywood, and his plan was this. Um, I'm, I'm going to sell this to the Spanish language home video market. 
Okay? And you know, don't even expect anybody to see this. It's going to go straight to home video. I'm hoping to, you know, I made it for $7,000. i am hoping to sell it for $15,000. I'll get the $15,000, make part two. This will be a trilogy. I'll make part two and then do the same thing. Sell it to the home video market, get some money, make part three. Those three films will be my film school. And I'll teach myself how to make films by making films. Um, and that was his plan. So um, he's going to go off and I say, you know, good luck, be careful, because it really is a jungle out there. There's all kinds of people waiting to take advantage of you. Um, and he says, okay. And I said, okay, let me know what happens. And this is what happens. He goes out there and um, the person he's trying to get in, 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 in touch with, with the you know, Spanish language home video company, doesn't return his calls and he's waiting and waiting, nothing is happening. So just uh, on a whim, uh, Robert takes this tape, okay, uh, to the largest agency in Hollywood, ICM, International uh, Creative Management, the biggest, most powerful agency in, in Hollywood. Walks in with this tape, and the tape has bedhead, it, the tape has what you just saw, bedhead and the trailer to El Mariachi. Okay? And he leaves it with the receptionist. Here's a film and a trailer of another film that I made. Maybe you all could look at it. And you know, don't you know, I mean, how many people must do that a day? It's like, please watch my movie, right? And you know, I'm sure they said, sure, kid. Yeah, right. Uh, well, your phone number's on it. Yeah, it is. And um, yeah, don't call us. We'll call you, OK? Um, <clears throat> next day, they call him, OK? Next day. And they said, we saw your movie. So that, that was incredible, student film, but the trailer. Now, do you have a film that goes with that, or is that just the trailer? And he said, no, there's a feature film. And they said, well, we need to see that. And I said, okay. You know, he says, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get you a copy. And, uh, and they want it so fast that they send a courier over to get it. Okay? They don't want to wait for him to show up with it. And they wanted to see this. Okay? And I asked him later, why didn't you just give them El Mariachi, the, the whole film? And he said, well, I wanted them to ask me to see it, not me to ask them to see it. Okay? You see the dynamic he was playing with? And all of a sudden, they're asking him to look at his movie. He's not pleading with them to look at his movie. Okay? Very smart guy. So um, once again, they watch the movie. Next day, they call him, and they say, we want to represent you, and we're going to get you a contract with a studio. And they shop it around. and. Uh, in a matter of days, he signed with Columbia Studios, okay? And he goes on to have the career that I've, I've told you about, okay? So um, that's that part of the story, okay? Um, the second part of the story that I want to talk about is um, what Robert has taught me. Because as I say, um, you know, students teach me so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably the most rewarding part of teaching, how much you teach me. Okay, I just, you know, and I'm inspired uh, by your curiosity and your energy and your earnestness and, and don't lose that. Um, and so let me just share a couple of things that I learned from him because I, I learned an awful lot from him. So let me just talk a little bit about what Robert taught me. And, and one of them is um, he, he's one of the smartest people I've ever known. He's probably as close to genius as anyone I've ever known, but he also works really hard. How do you make a $7,000 movie you know, look like a studio movie? You know, look like a $7 million or a $70 million movie? Well, you work real hard, OK? And he just works and works and works. And it continues to this day. I mean, he is, he's, just, you know, he's the hardest working on, person on the set. So if you're working for him, you're trying to keep up with him because he's working harder than anybody, OK? And he just, you know, he leads by example. Um, so um, he's very, very hard working. And just the, the physical labor, OK? Just the physical heavy lifting of doing something, OK? That's the hard work. But there's another part of hard work that he's very good at, and that is the discipline of sitting down and doing the work, even when you don't maybe feel like it, OK? and all the planning and all the preparation that went into this film. He, had, he did everything. He shot it, he edited it, uh, he directed it, he wrote it, okay? He did some of the music. I mean, it, everything, all right? And so everything had to be planned out because he didn't have anybody else to rely on and he, he didn't have any money you know, to hire anybody else, okay? So um, the physical labor, but also the conceptual, the discipline 
to sit down and get the job done. Okay, um, you know, it's, it, it, like I say, it's taught me a lot. Uh, <clears throat> here's another thing: um, make the most of what you have. He didn't have seven million or seventy million. Okay, he had seven thousand. The other thing he did is he said, I sat down after I wrote the script. I sat down and made a list of what I had. Okay, what I could get for nothing. Okay, and you saw it. Okay, he said, okay, I had an antique bathtub. I had a dog. I had uh, a bar. I had the use of a jail for one day. I had a bus. I had two pickup trucks. Okay. I had a swimming pool. And all of that's in the film. So, you know, it's just, it's like, okay, what, I have to use all these things because they'll add production value and they're free. So, um, you know, just uh, in terms of making the most of what you have, making, um, you know, you don't, uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Okay. One of his things is, <clears throat> you're, no matter what you do, okay, but making a movie, you're going to have problems, okay? And uh, how do you solve the problems? And he said there's generally two ways to solve a problem. And one way is you throw money at it, okay? Let's just spend more money, okay? That'll solve the problem. And he says that never solves the problem, okay? Um, the way to solve a problem is to get creative and figure out a creative solution to the problem, not a money solution, okay? Therefore, you know, using what you have, okay? Make the most of what you have. Uh, and, 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 and that continues to this day. He, he's created what he calls the mariachi aesthetic, okay? Which is, I'm gonna make movies fast and efficiently and economically. And producers love this, okay? Uh, when producers understand you're not gonna be wasting their money, they love you, okay? And they wanna work with you. So he turned the limitation of $7,000 into a big uh, plus for him, okay? Uh, when he made Spy Kids, Spy Kids 1, um, many of you probably saw it, right? When you were 10 years ago, right? Uh, <clears throat> when you were 18? Uh, when you're 18 now, when you were eight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he's, um, he's making what looks like a $100 million movie, and he makes it for $30 million. And he said he actually got phone calls from the executives telling him, don't you want to spend a little bit more money? Aren't you going to need a little bit more money? You've got all these special effects. And he said, no, no, I can do it. I can do it. So make the most of what you have. The other thing is don't wait until you have everything perfect, OK? He didn't wait till he had $7 million. He had 7000 He was going to make, you know, he was going to make the movie. Um, he has this thing where he says, um, you know that everybody told me I couldn't make this movie for $7,000. And he said, what they're really saying is not you can't make the movie for $7,000, you can't make the movie. They're basically saying, don't even try. Let, you know, let us handle the movie making, okay? Uh, you shouldn't be doing this at home, okay? And he said, no, I wanted to make a movie. I'm not gonna let them tell me I can't make a movie. So he went out and made a movie. So make the most of what you have, okay? Um, serve an apprenticeship, okay? Here's, here's the thing. I think all of us have to spend a big chunk of time, and it's coming if it hasn't already started for some of you already, a big chunk of time learning to do what it is you want to do. A big chunk of time. Eight years, 10 years, 12 years, okay? And um, don't be afraid of that time, and don't discount it, okay? You think of uh, how much time it took Robert Okay, um, the, the advantage he has is he started when he was 10 years old. So when he got here, he had already put in eight or, eight or nine of the apprenticeship years already, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then after that, you know, there was the UT years. And after that was the first kind of studio years. And you add all that up, and that was probably, you know, 12, 14 years that he put together, okay? Now he's an expert, he's a pro, he's one of the most polished and accomplished filmmakers in the world, okay, and he can do anything, but he was learning. So don't discount the apprenticeship, okay? You're gonna need it, it's, a, it's an important time, it's a crucial time, it's a learning time. So the thing is, don't get impatient, just ask yourself, what is it that I need to learn? What did Robert need to learn? Well, he knew video filmmaking, he needed to learn film filmmaking. So he comes to the University of Texas and bedhead. What's the next thing he needs to learn? I need to learn feature filmmaking. Okay, El Mariachi, okay? What's the next thing he needs to learn? I need to learn feature filmmaking in the studio system. 
desperado, okay? And you think about that chunk of time, but he was learning something all the way, and he accepted that. This is his apprenticeship, okay? So be aware of that, and um, you know, don't get impatient. Um, enjoy it, and, and it's crucial. It's, it's part of your learning process. Um, keep a generous spirit, okay? Robert and his co-producer, Elizabeth Avellan, uh, <clears throat> are very generous with their time and their money. They're always donating to uh, charities. They'll send you a Christmas card, and it'll say, um, Charles and Cecilia, we have donated X number of dollars in your name to this charity, okay? Happy holidays, all right? They're always thinking of others, okay? Um, he'll come and, you know, why does he come and, and, and lecture? Uh, at the university and visit with classes, okay? Um, you know, and he does it for me all the time, okay? Here's a Latino images class that he came to, okay? Uh, a couple years back. Uh, back. Um, here is last May's film history class that he visited, okay? Um, and um, I was, you know, I had the camera ready. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, you'll also see him at the Austin Film Festival in the South by Southwest. He's always on a panel. He's always doing something for Austin Film Society. He's always you know, giving of his time. And you think about it, time is the most valuable resource. The most valuable resource. It's more valuable than anything, and he's giving it, okay? Um, so you, know, you just look at uh, the South by Southwest uh, appearances that he's made. And after each one, he is surrounded by people, okay? And, you know, everybody wants something, all right? And they want his signature, or they want a job, or they want him to read a script, or, you know, you know. and it's just, there's a throng around him going in and coming out. And it's very draining, you know, um, to do it over and over again. And I asked him one time, when we got back to the green room, I said, you know, um, I mean, keep coming to the University of Texas, but all this other stuff, you know, you don't have to do all of that. And, uh, you know, he doesn't get paid or anything. It's all donated time. And, uh, <clears throat> and I said, why do you do it? And he said, you know why? I think maybe out there somewhere is somebody like me you know, all those years ago, who just needs a little bit of encouragement, who needs a role model, who needs to see somebody that's going to say, do, go do it, okay? Uh, you know, take, you know take, take that chance. Do what you want to do, okay? Find your passion. This is the last thing I want to talk about, okay? Um, I believe Robert is as successful as he is because he has found what he loves to do. Here at the university, he found his passion, okay? And actually, he probably found it before he got here, but he, con he confirmed it here, okay, um, on site. Um, he found a place where he could realize his potential. And here at the University of Texas, what we want you to do is realize your potential, okay? You all are full of potential, okay? You're accomplished, you're bright, you're energetic, or you wouldn't be here. And the next step is find your potential, okay? Realize your potential. How do you do that, okay? Well, I think you do that by um, finding what you love to do, okay? So uh, I think your goal uh, here at the university is um, to find what you love to do, okay? Uh, <clears throat> um, this should be the place where you discover what it is you're gonna be doing and contributing you know, to the rest of the world for the rest of your life, okay? What is that going to be, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that divides you all into two groups, okay? Some of you already know what you want to do, okay? Have already found it. You're like Robert. Some of you are still looking and you don't know. So let me talk about each group because each one of those two groups has some work to do, okay? So some of you already know. Okay, and you already know what you want to do. And as I say, you're like Robert, okay? You have an idea of what you're going to do. Your job here at college, at the University of Texas, is the following, okay? I know what my passion is, I know what I love to do. First thing you need to do is confirm that. Make sure that you're doing it for the right reason. And the right reason is that you love to do it. 
Are you doing it because you just are, you know, you're just enthralled by this, whatever it is, okay? Are you doing it because when you do it, time just kind of slips away and you just get so engrossed in doing it? Would you do it if nobody paid you to do it, okay? I do my job for free. Don't tell the legislators because they'll take me up on it, okay? <laughs> but I would do my job for free. I mean, talk about movies, are you kidding me? Every day, oh, I'll do that, sign me up. Um, you know, would you do it for free? Are you doing it for that reason? Or are you doing it for some other reason? That's why I say confirm and make sure. Are you doing it um, because somebody told you it's a, it's a good job market? Are you doing it because you can make a lot of money? Are you doing it because you want to impress somebody? That was me, okay? I was a pre-med major and I was doing it, I think, because I thought it would impress people that I was an MD, okay? And it would have, okay? And medicine is probably the most noble profession, okay? I'm not saying that, it just wasn't for me, okay? And I was in medicine for the wrong reasons, okay? And that's why, um, you know, I, I had to leave because I wasn't doing it for me. And so you've got to examine your own heart and your heart will tell you. We can't tell you, your heart will tell you. So confirm and make sure you're in it for the right reasons. If you are in it for the right, right reasons, then the second part of your job, if you know already, is to expand yourself, okay? Take some other courses just for fun, okay? Do something else so that you have something other than yourself and your work to talk about. You have to be a full person. Ask around, ask your friends, your roommates, what's a good class to take? What's a professor I need to take um, you know, before I leave this campus, okay? What is, you know, you know th this um, campus gonna offer me, all right? So um, that's if you already know, okay? Some of you don't know, okay? And if you don't know, um, you're in luck, okay? Because you're at one of the best places on the planet for searching after a career, okay? You are in a perfect spot to find a career, okay? There are so many physical and human resources on this campus that you can take advantage of. Um, and, and, you know, it just, it's, it's, you should be able to find information on just about any career uh, imaginable right here, okay? So begin your quest, okay? Begin looking for what that will be. Begin uh, examining what uh, is in your heart and what, um, uh, is in your future. So here's, here's my deal. I think, um, you know, you're gonna have to get up. You're gonna have to get up every morning for the next 40 or 50 years and do something, okay? Go to a job. Might as well be something you really love to do, okay? Before I had this job, you know, I was always, you know, gosh, maybe I can call in sick today, okay? And go to a movie, all right? Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, and I never call in sick, okay? Never. Never. I've never, I was sick one day since I've been teaching uh, in 1983. One day. And it, I was really sick. But other than that, I mean, uh, and, you know, so I wake up not trying to think, how can I get out of going to work? I wake up thinking, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be lecturing on Alfred Hitchcock. How can I make it the best Alfred Hitchcock uh, lecture I've ever done? That's what I'm thinking, okay? And that's how you want to think about work, whatever it is, okay? Because uh, Robert will tell you this. Um, it's not work. He doesn't think it's work. He says, people pay me, you know, astronomical amounts to play. And all I do is play all day long, okay? I'm like a kid here, playing. And that's what it feels like when you love what you're doing. You're playing, okay? So, um, what we here at the uh, University of Texas want uh, and hope for you is that you will realize your full potential. My wish for each one of you is that you find your El Mariachi. That thing that fulfills you, that is deeply satisfying, that allows you to maximize your creativity and realize your potential. We're here to help you. Your Mariachi is out there. It's within reach. You have never been as close to it as you are now. So I want to tell you, go for it. And Robert and I wish you good luck. Thank you very much.